So, and I guess another part to this video now is uh, I made a bus bar. It's made of uh, steel. It's an iron steel mix. Uh, made that with a piece of old, I don't even know what you call it, mounting bracket. And I cut that out with a reciprocating saw. Then I used my drill press and I drilled two big old holes through it at the points that needed to be made and bolted that in. I had to remove the switch in order to get the bus bar in there, but that was fine. Once it was in, it's in. It's not moving. These guys are solid now. On off switch. It's good and placed. So that's good. I went ahead and I disconnected the uh, the reverse uh, solenoid so that I could get the wires that power the actual motor in place. So you can see there's a red and a black. They don't actually mean anything. They're not synonymous with anything at this point uh, because it's going to have forward and reverse. So I have to figure that out when I get to that point. I might have to swap these out there if it comes to that. But yeah, so that's it. Also, the motor, I realized, is rotated stupidly. It, I don't know why the other connection point is all the way in the back instead of rotating the motor to this side where it would make a lot more sense and a lot less wire usage. I, I did notice one more dumb thing I did. So before I connected this panel, I meant to plug in the, uh, I don't even know what they're called, the balancing connector. I think the balancing connector is down under there. So I got to possibly take that board off in order to plug in the balance of connector just to plug that thing back in but <laughs> i guess i guess it is a win i'm making progress here i'm gonna go ahead and connect up what's next the uh battery negative terminal to oh sorry the not the battery negative the uh, the motor negative that comes out of the controller to the point on this reversing control controller or reversing solenoid. So that's right here. And then when that's attached, I'm gonna tighten it up and then mount this back up to the wall so that it's nice and secure. If you can tell, it's getting to be a little bit of a mess in there, but unfortunately that's just the way it is. I'm glad that I got good wire with good sheathing on it because everything's kinda of sitting right next to everything else. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, it's coming out pretty good. I'll go ahead and leave this on my nightstand and see if I can get any uh, shots of this. Not that people like to watch me from this angle, but you know, it is what it is. Whew. And it doesn't help that it's raining outside, so it got extremely humid in here. So there's that. All right. We need to go from here to up here. And I'm thinking the easiest way is to route behind this, the switch. And screw them right in, and then I'll worry about connecting the bottom half. Now where did I put that? There. Oh, sorry, there's some other. We need that to tighten it back down. This box really was an awesome find. For $15, you can't find those things for that price. They, they sell them way more than that. This wire should be sheathed well. This wire is not sheathed well. I don't think I can use this wire as it is. I'll have to re-solder that one later. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. There's a big old cut in the side of my wire. That I don't have any more heat. I guess I could wrap it in something, but I'd rather just cut it back to here and re-solder that connector on. So we'll do it with the uh, absurdly big connector. Alright, we're going to go ahead and I might stick it up this way and angle it back around the bottom. So it's to keep it from being super stuck to the sidewall where it is grounded. I'm trying to make these videos not super long because, you know, no one wants that. Everybody wants to just know how to do stuff. I might 
turn it to the right. Yeah, it gives me a little bit more room, a little bit more length. Everything is cramped in here. That's just the way it is. <laughs> That's why it looks so nice without all these wires in there. It looks like a rat's nest when it's done. I guess I can point out that I also replaced that really long wire from the previous video with a shorter version. All heat shrinked and soldered together so that is nice and attached. But when I say soldered, I attached some new old fasteners to it. And what are they called? No, disconnects. Makes a good old solid connection for us. So we don't have to worry about it coming loose. That's one of the worst problems they encounter. You have one of these things, you're driving it around, it just turns off. You don't, you don't know what happened. Did the controller die? Did, you know, you really hope it wasn't the controller. It's five, six hundred dollars. You really hope it's just something stupid, like a loose wire, but at the same time, you don't want to find that thing. Other way I figured out how what goes where is originally when I built this thing, I found schematics online for this the actual DC solenoid slash reversing solenoid. It's actually two solenoids. When I'm referring to solenoid, there's two, one, two. Uh, they just put them together so that they alternate when current's applied to certain points. So, yeah, there's that. So, I'm not a complete idiot. I just don't specify everything out loud. Oh, if you didn't know what I'm doing right now, I'm hooking up the, uh, the reversing con solenoid again. So, they really mounted. That side, I don't know if this side ever came super tight. I want both sides to be really tight. Alright, so the nice thing about these two wires is I don't need them in here. I can push them back out a little bit. Now this one, let me see, anything I can do for this, that might be at its best, it's gonna be. I don't know, I still think it's kind of cleaner than the old way. At least I can know what's going on now. Everything's easily to see it noticeable. Before I had a wire coming from up here, 
wire coming from the key switch on, wire going to one of these solder points down here, and then I had it all fed by a positive lead leading off of one of these, which I'm, I'm going to have to add a positive lead to one of these terminals. But, I mean, I don't need it yet, but I will. I'm going to need to add a key switch terminal, and that's going to be unfortunate because it's going to add more draping wires, but that's just the way it is. So the key switch is going to have to come into, I'm thinking down here, to one of my nice, well, you can't see what I'm pointing at. The key switch is this red side of this input, and that is just an on signal. It's going to send 48 volts, but very low, very low amperage, so you don't really need much wire for that. That's why these wires are so tiny on this diode. You can intercept it. I'm going to put a lead to one of these bus bar terminals. I haven't decided which side. And then I'm going to have I, remember that $3 wire from earlier. It's up on that bench somewhere. That's what's going to have the on-off switch up by the steering wheel. And the steering wheel is going to have a wire with four wires that's inside of it. It'll come through the same hole here and latch on to four different points of one of these bus bars. And then from there, I'll add whatever wiring in here I need to allow that pass through. And that's it for now.